the takeover. Okay, did we start? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. That's how I start. Takeover. Now there's a lot of things we're gonna get in it. Speak. And when I speak, and when I speak, and when I speak, and when I Okay. Okay. Levels are good. Levels are good. You're welcome. Levels are great. You're welcome. Levels are good. The levels are good. You're welcome. And we started and the levels are good. And we started and we start because the levels are good. And that's how we start. We always start the podcast by with me checking the levels. And then that's how you know we started. And welcome to the takeover. And the takeover is here with Michael and Ochi. And the takeover is here. And we started and I'm ready to go. And here's the problem now. We got a lot of things to go over. I say that every week. I, I say we got a lot of things to go over. It's good to be back in L.A. Good to be back grinding in the comedy scene. And I got to be honest, before I even start this episode, I don't know if I'll finish it. I don't know if I'll finish this episode. Have I ever had an episode split into two days? Have I ever done that before? I don't think I have. I don't think I've ever split an episode in two different days, but... I feel like that I feel like my energy might not necessarily be right for for today's episode because this is a late night episode. I I got back from a show. It's late at night, but I wanted to put out the podcast for you guys Friday. I wanted you guys to wake up Friday and have a new episode. I like when my episodes come out on Friday. I feel like it's like, "Okay, I'm leading you into the weekend. I'm leading you into the weekend and it's Friday night and guess what? You're having a good weekend. Why did you have a good weekend? Because you listened to the takeover, and the takeover makes everybody better. It makes you better. It makes me better. And when I do it, I become a better person. And I feel better doing the podcast knowing that it's making you guys better. And I've always, i I've preached that before. I've preached before. I'm a, you could say I'm a preacher. People could say I'm a preacher. People could say that if you wanted to. You could say it if you wanted to, but let's be honest. Um, so for starters, what do we got? What do we got for starters? I re- I realized that um, we could uh, do a lot of things differently if I was more prepared. Am I a little underprepared for this? Yes. Is is that why my brain froze for a second and I didn't know what to say? Yes. Do I mess up all the time? Not necessarily. Do I know how to recover and fix it? Yes. Is this one of those situations where I'm recovering right now and fixing it? Yes. Do I still not know what I'm going to say next? Correct. But am I going to figure it out soon? Yes. Is this something that I'm doing as a bit or is it real life? We don't know. (laughs) Welcome to the takeover. And uh, we start, uh, first of all, I like to start actually for real. I like to start with uh, thank you for everybody that participates. Thank you for everybody that wants to be a team member. Thank you for all those people. Thank you for everybody who wants to participate and be a team member. And by participating, that means you uh, have joined the Patreon or you're a team member on my YouTube page. Thank you for that. Uh, Make sure you subscribe, like the videos, share it if you can. If you're listening, please leave a five-star review. That's it. You know what I mean? Simple as it. Uh, simple as it is, I also have a takeover clips page that I um, lazily work on. Lazily work on, but which you know I'll, I'll try to put up more clips. Supposedly someone else was going to help me out with these clips. Never heard back from him. Uh, you know, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You just uh, people hit me up and say they're going to do stuff all the time, and then you know you can't push them. You get excited, uh, and that's that. But there's a takeover clips page. Subscribe to that. Check it out if you want. Uh, and I'll be posting more clips on there as well. Um, now that we're back into it, I was in Miami for like eight days. Kind of, well, not necessarily Miami. I was like in South Florida for a while, and I liked the vibe of. Uh, I was having fun in Florida. I was having a good time. Uh, I, I got away, and I was able to do a show in Florida. As a matter of fact, I do have a show coming up in uh, at Palm Beach Improv December twenty second. I'm doing a show December twenty second at the Palm Beach Improv. Uh, it's 8 p.m. Uh, tickets will go on sale shortly, but uh, keep that in mind. Uh, if you are obviously part of my team uh, and you're a team member or you're part of the Patreon, I'll, I'll, I'll comp your tickets, obviously. Uh, I usually give a shout-out to my loyal podcast listeners. Uh, but we're, we're around the holidays, uh, and I feel like, you know, uh, post-election, L.A. feels better. 
I came back to LA. The energy was different. Now I don't know if uh, that's just in my head, but I, I don't believe it is. I believe that you can feel an energy. I feel that um, LA is, is a lot better. I, f I feel like just being here, people are happier. They're less angry. They're more excited. People uh, feel like uh, there's they're, they're optimistic about the future. That's a real thing. That's a real thing I feel just being around people. I did two shows yesterday on a Wednesday doing two shows during a pandemic. There's shows popping up all around LA and they're all outside shows and 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 things are things feel like they're a little bit normal. They're not normal. Of course they're not normal, but it feels like it's normal for the world that we're living in. And when you're at these comedy shows and there's the hanging out, it feels great. It makes you feel a lot better. Everybody's happier. Everybody's just excited to be around people. And I think that's important. And uh, just the energy overall is better in L.A. I, I really believe that. And it could be because of the results of the election. Um, you know, whether or not that makes a difference in your life. You know, I've always been someone who stress, stresses that, you know, my life is going to be the same regardless of what's happening politically. And I know that sometimes turns people off, but that's the truth. Um, I'm still going to be sitting in this orange chair doing my podcast weekly and trying to do stand up and, and wanting to just be on stage because that's what that's what I I feed off of. And that could be selfish, but so be it. Um, you know, as I grow, I become a, I believe I become a better person. And, you know, I I do have empathy and, and maybe I will be more involved as I get older and have more responsibilities. But my responsibilities are at a minimum. So that's the way I feel. And, um, you know, I and I stand by that. So um, but I that being said, I, I, I am happy with what the results are. OK, uh, I'm happy with the results because I think it is better for comedy. I think it's better for comedy. In a way, uh, and, and and this is the only political thing I'll say because this is a very – first of all, this is a sports podcast that doesn't talk about sports. But we're not a political podcast, but, you know, it affects everybody's life in one way or another even if you aren't political. And, and this is the way it affects my life. I think it is better that Biden wins because uh, for whatever reason, uh, Trump in office, I, I got to be honest uh, – it was entertaining. I, I thought it was entertaining, like, just to see the mess. Everybody was mad. But it felt like uh, the last four years comedy was um, not as fun because people were angry and they were more sensitive towards what comics were saying on stage. They would and, – and, you know, the, it has nothing to do politically. Like, even if you were, weren't talking about politics on stage, just people w would be more offended based off uh, just trigger words, just anything – that they would hear that they would think is a bad word or people shouldn't be talking about. I felt like they were quicker to be offended by it. Whereas I think people will be a little bit more open-minded and relaxed now that there's an actual politician in office. Like, you know, regardless of if you're Republican or Democrat, I think it's better that someone should be doing the job that's been doing it for years. I, I believe that in everything. I feel like uh, if I pay for someone to come to my house and paint the walls, I want to pay a guy who's been doing it for 10 years as opposed to a guy who just started a business because he had money and he advertised it better, if that makes sense. I just feel like uh, let's leave politics to the politicians, whether or not you think they're bad people or not. they That's their passion. There's a reason they do it. It's because they, they believe in it and they're passionate about it. So some of them have to be kind of good at it, uh, better than we can or better than a reality star or a businessman. So – that being said, I think it's better for comedy that that did happen and the election happened uh, and the results did happen. Um, I think it is better for comedy and um, I think the energy, I, I really do, I feel like the energy is better. Even in Florida, Florida was a red state, not necessarily in South Florida. South Florida, there's a, the Broward, Broward and Dade are blue counties, but I felt like, uh, you know, I, I have Republican friends and I feel like even, you know, even them are like, like, you know, do, at the end of the day, does do people really care? Like, are they gonna really let it bother them? Like, there's a guy who's out here, and he goes, and and he's a hard Republican, and and he's on social media, and he's angry, and and I'm thinking, well, he's so angry, he's posting all this stuff, it's it's fake, and 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 the election was rigged and stuff like that, and he's going so hard on it every day, twenty posts on his stories, and he's and he's and he's mad. You you can tell he's mad, and. And at the end of the day, regardless of what happens in in the next few months, how does he just go back to being normal? Like, how is he 
So is he like in March, March 8th, let's just pick a date on March 8th. Is he going to wake up and just like, uh, let, let, all right, let's say COVID's over and, and the country's back to normal. So it's June 16th. It's June 16th. Everything's back to normal. Co- COVID's over. The, the vaccine's been released. It's just like it's better. And people are, 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 are back to working more and, and we're going to concerts, we're in restaurants and we feel normal. Is this guy still going to be an angry guy about politics or is he just going to go on with his life and be like, yeah, sorry about that. I, I, sorry I was so upset. Like that That's what I don't understand for people who get uh, so angry or, or passionate right or left, right or left, and they go so hard in the paint, as they like to say in basketball, when a guy puts his – head down and he puts his shoulders up and goes in for a layup that's going hard in the paint. Um, what like when you're going so hard in the paint, right or left, well, is that just for the election or is that who you are now? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, are you going to always be that person? Now, are you, if you're going to take such a strong stance, are you going to continue to be that advocate going on with your life, going forward with your life? Like, that's what doesn't make sense to me. Like, how do you go so hardcore with it that would be like if like i was on instagram and twitter and facebook and on this podcast every day like the dolphins the dolphins the dolphins and this is why the dolphins are good and this is why they're the best and this is what, what this is what they should be doing and this is bullshit and i'm angry about things that they do that i don't dis- agree with and then i'm happy about things that they do that i agree with and 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 and, and, and i celebrate them but then i'm also angry all the time and it's just that that all the time and then when football season was over, then I was just like, so um, I went to the beach the other day. Like you would be like, you're a crazy person. You're an unstable person. That's an unstable person. That's someone who's not thinking logically. That's how. That's what I think. I think you're not thinking logically if 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 you if you work that way. If if if, if that's how you go throughout day. And and then when I'm going throughout day and I meet people and I think this stems from my mom. It's just like I think that. Um, you know, if you just say even keel, like that's, it's not like I, we, everybody has a passion. I have a passion. Clearly, I have a passion, and I get angry and I get upset all the time too. But am I gonna let something take over my life? I know the podcast is called the Takeover, but we're trying to take over our lives with positive thinking and positive habits that can develop us into a better person and help the people around us. That's kind of the, the sense of the takeover. I feel like it, you know. This is episode 40. We're at episode 40 now. So I've done this podcast for 40 episodes, and I I, I, I strongly believe that the podcast has made me a better person. Um, you know, here we are. I, I don't know how long. I, I don't want to look to see how long I've been doing the, this episode already because I hate that because then I'm looking at the clock and I want to get to an hour then it feels like work, but I didn't feel like doing the episode right now. I was going to wait until tomorrow morning, but then I was like, let me, let me just do it. And, and, and here I am and I'm in it right now. And I feel good. I'm glad I started it because I feel like I'm having a real talk with you guys. And, um, it gets, here's, you know, I'm going off and, and this is going off into not having someone here help me. Um, but like, um, it gets discouraging sometimes. Like sometimes it feels like, why, why am I doing this? Who am I doing this for? And I know it's for myself. Most, most importantly, it's for myself. But sometimes it gets discouraging because I'm like, I'm not getting the views or the listens that I, I, I think I just, des- I, I, I should deserve. I don't want to say deserve. I don't deserve anything. Nobody really deserves anything. I mean, everybody deserves. Um, you know, I feel like a shot at. At life, at you know, going into you know, if you're born, if you're a baby, I guess, I don't know if that makes sense, but like I feel like going back to the podcast, like I, uh, it's a lot of work, and when you you're doing a lot of work, and it's not for money, it's and it's it's different than stand up, you know, like stand up is like I did it for years and years for free, I would do it for years, I would I would I would work at a bar. And as soon as I got off at this bar gig, I would I would rush over to this open mic that would close at 10 and I would ask to get off early just so I could get up and I would go up at that very end. It was this place called Marty's and I would go up at the very end and I would go up and sometimes there would be two people there, the guy who ran it and this lady and I would go up for them and I would just be like, man, this sucks. I'm going up for two people, but like they're here to listen to me. 
And I fucking did that for years for shit, for nothing. And then like I just it made me feel good just being up there and it, it, it was important to me. And, 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 and looking back that doing those sets and doing that work, it paid off in, in certain ways. It paid off. It paid off in, 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 in ways to where like I was like, wow, I, I'm doing it and my career's going well. And then you you have shit like this happen, COVID, and then you you feel like you you it, there's so much uncertainty in comedy, and then you're like you're scared. You're like, you know, am I not gonna have this anymore from everything that's happened this year? And and I don't want, ever want that to go away. And then it started coming back these outside shows, and then I was in Florida, and I and and, and I did a show inside of a comedy club for the first time since July, and. And I'm on stage, and, and, and I'm not even having an ego. There's no way I could ever stop this. I, I'm too good to like. I'm too good of a comic to not make a huge career out of this. There's no way. Like, if you if if I if I have, if I have the opportunity, if 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 there was a a TV, if there was a TV show, if if I did stand up in front of a billion people, let's say there was a billion people watching me do stand up, I know I could turn millions of them into fans for life just from where i'm at now like now that stand-up is going on right now and i can get up twice to three times a week i feel so good on stage with what i'm doing and i don't know if it goes back to uh i don't know why i don't know why and I, like i know that and i know i'm getting off track here and i was talking about the podcast and how it's discouraging that i don't do it for a lot of views and listen sometimes but this is all going to make sense. I promise you just stay in there with me. My my whole thing is I I will I'll I can I can like the stand up that I'm doing now is different than I've ever done in my life like and I don't know if it's because of COVID and it was taken away from me for a second and being scared that I wasn't going to be able to do it because of other reasons and then uh just the way I'm performing now I I I feel like when I'm on stage I'm I, I know I, I know what I'm saying. I'm I'm saying it with with truth. I, like everything that I'm saying, every joke that I'm saying, I'm I'm saying this because this is this is how I believe. This is what I believe in. This is what I this is this is what I want. I, I, I want this life and this is what I believe in and, and that's what I'm saying in a joke form on stage. And I feel like I'm really connecting with people more than I've ever have in my life right now when I'm performing. And the last Four or five sets that I've done have been the most powerful sets I've ever felt in my life. Like I felt like I was on stage and I was like, I was like, I was, I was telling the people, I was like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it was almost like I was, as I'm doing my jokes and I'm doing my routine, I'm, I'm telling them, I'm telling them to connect with me. I don't, I don't know if, and, and I don't know if this is because of what I experienced in Joshua Tree or what I, 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 I I feel good. I feel really good. And uh, I, I don't know. I almost got emotional just talking about what I was just talking about. Like I felt like, you know, I, I felt like I was – I felt like I, I could have almost cried right there and I was okay with that coming out in front of you strangers. I, you know, whatever. But like I – you know, I, I don't know if I'm making sense but like I, I – I, I can't not ever do this. I have to I have to do this stand up forever. I have to I I can't I have to I have to keep doing it. I need it. I and it's 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 the most powerful thing for me. Like it it feeds my soul. It feeds my soul so much. And and the reason I do this podcast is because it has it, it's become a hand in hand with what stand up comedy is today. Every stand up comedian that is pretty successful from Bill Burr to me, it, everybody has a, 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 a podcast. And I think it's so that people who are fans of you can come connect to you on a real level. I mean, some people have silly podcasts, but I think I don't think mine's a, a really a silly podcast. I think it's more uh, real. Like I, I I think someone explained it to me one time that when they've listened to my podcast, it's like we're just hanging out with a friend. And that made me feel awesome because that 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 is what I I want. I like hanging out with my friends, and I want I want this to feel that way. And um, you know, I I sometimes will get in my head and get frustrated that I am doing this, and it's for not a lot of money, and it's not for you know, it's not for really anything that can that can help me help my livelihood. 
but you know, I, I, I feel like if, 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 if enough people saw this, they would, they would connect to what I'm trying to say and, and who I am as a person and maybe relate to me. You know, I don't, I, I don't know, but you know, it's like, and it's nothing. I've only done 40, 40 of these episodes. It's been 40, uh, r- relatively 40 weeks since COVID started, you know, cause I've had 40 episodes, maybe a little less because I did extra episodes in a week, but I, you know, I have a long way to go and I know that the this podcast is like stand up. I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to grind through this and sometimes it's not going to be as fun as I want it to be. But if I keep doing this podcast every week and work at it and even do it when I don't want to do it, one day I will I will I will be at peace and feel connected through this podcast more than I've ever felt in my life. And I'm telling you this, but at the same time, I'm telling myself this out loud. Sometimes I, I've always, I've always done this in life. I've, I, I, even in comedy, I remember like you'll meet younger comics. They'll ask you questions, and I'll, and I'll be talking to a younger comic, or someone else, and and, and I'll be telling them about stand up. And as I'm telling them about stand up, I'm really, I'm really telling myself this. I'm reminding myself whether it's feedback or or. Or something knowledgeable or wisdom that I've learned in, in the 10 years of my and almost 11 years I've been in LA in this business, which you know is 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 nothing relatively compared to other people. I mean this this is a lifetime. Like it's a career is a long time. 11 years is nothing. You know when you spread span it, 50 years you look at it. And you, you know, 50 years from now I hope I'm I I hope I'm an 80 year old man and I look back and I'm like wow I was clueless. Um, but I, by, but I enjoyed the journey. And, um, I think the point of that was I was a little, uh, discouraged and not excited to do the podcast this week. I felt, um, a little down because I, I and I don't know if it was because of the elect uh, election, you know, be that, uh, you know, the numbers were not as good as they've been. And, and then you get in your head and you're like, is it, is it because of the material? Is it because of what I'm talking about? Am I not connecting with people? Am I not? Is it not entertaining? You know, you, this is what comedians or performers go through all the time. I'm like, am I not doing good enough? Am I not do? Am I not doing a good job? And then I'm like, should I? It, 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 and then sometimes you ask yourself, like in stand up, you you try things on stage, and if it doesn't work after a few times, you move on from it. You go, well, this isn't working, so let's move on from this bit. So then, if that's happening with uh, extra like uh, other stuff that I'm doing out outside of comedy, that is is going to help my comedy career and it's not working, then am I wasting my time? And I felt that way with the podcast for a, a little bit. I'm not saying I've ever felt it. I'm saying I felt it for a little bit. I would never quit. I would never quit the podcast. I think it is important. And I think most important, the most important part of the podcast is the fact that I think it's made me a better person. And I think that's all that matters. I think that uh, essentially the the takeover is is maybe just me maybe i'm just you know um documenting self therapy in a way maybe that's what i'm doing maybe that's what this is and maybe you know regardless of you know who's who's listening and who's watching um you know again and i know i've stressed this before but like maybe it's helped one person and that's good enough you never know and I know I, it has because people have reached out and that does make me feel good. And I don't want them to think, oh, well, you're forgetting about me. Because there have been people that have uh, have written me some really sweet, nice things uh, about the podcast and about stand-up and, and, and how – um, I've helped them, you know, with my dog episode, they've lost their dog and, and they've listened to that episode and it made them, it helped them a lot and, and, and their journey or in anything else. So I don't want to take away from that. I, I take away from that. Like I know that it has done that, but, um, I, I guess I'm, you know, I'm just telling you that I get down sometimes too. I get down, especially with my work, you know, it's, it's my art. I'm, I'm, I'm out here being vulnerable. So, um, you know. I, I think, uh, but I want you to know that I know that it, it, it can, it can help people in, in a way that you never would have thought it could. So, and then that, that makes me feel better. It makes me feel better for sure. But at the end of the day, I am doing it for myself, I think, because it's like, it, it's making me a better person, but yeah. Um, you know, I like to be, you know, silly on here sometimes. And then sometimes I like to get real, but, um, 
yeah i mean just feeling like with with stand up just feeling on, on the way i feel on stage right now i i, I don't know i i want to say it has something to do with uh i mean going to when i was back in joshua tree i like i, I there was a point when I was in Joshua Tree, I didn't look at my phone for like three days. And that was the first time I've done that and since I've had a phone. You know what I mean? Like since I've since I've had a smartphone since since years. I mean, even when you were working at a bar or like I would you would still look at it and look at text. Like I, I just felt like I was just really in the moment and I was present and I was enjoying my friends and I think it goes back to uh <sighs> I mean, just everything. It's been a, a, it's been a heavy year, and I think that, like, I was back in Florida, and I was, uh, I was spending a lot of time with my friends, and uh, man, I miss them. I don't even know what's happening right now. I like was so happy to like just <clears throat> be with like to um uh, fuck man to like experience like life with them like if that makes sense like um, like, I don't even know what's happening right now. I feel like, uh, embarrassed. Sorry. Like, um, I was there for a while and, uh, I don't know why I'm fucking getting emotional. Um, I'm gonna drink a chug of water, dudes. Here it is. Huh. <sighs> what a fucking bitch. Let's get it together. Um, <sighs> I'm staying with my buddy Tim, and I'm staying with my buddy Tim, and he's with his fiance, and they live together, and they're at that point in their life. And then I stayed with my buddy uh, Mike, and his and his wife Vicky, and they have a son, and he's three, and they have a a, a a daughter, and she's one. And then I stayed with my buddy Jay, and his wife Ange, and they have four kids, eight, seven, and these two twins. And they're uh, four. And it was like. I was like a part of like. I was seeing everything. Just. It's magic man. It's like I'm seeing. A life that I don't know. If I'll have that. And. That makes me sad. I think that's why I'm getting sad because it's like, uh, it's not that I'm sad. It's just like, I want that. I I do want that, but I want to stand up more, man. I want to stand up more, but that shit's not guaranteed. (sighs) That's what's, that's what's scary, man. Like. Like, not being able to, like, I'm missing that. I'm missing all of their lives. For, for, I'm, I'm sacrificing that for this. <sighs> Literally, that's what it is. <laughs> like... I'm literally chasing this dream that I want so bad and because of that I'm I'm sacrificing that life like I'm I'm missing I'm missing that life I'm missing all of their lives and that shit kind of makes me sad because I want to be a part of it all. Like I like I, I want to be a part of all of their lives. But 
you know, I, I, I gotta do me. I gotta, I gotta do me and I gotta like, I gotta fucking, I gotta put my head down and I gotta grind and I gotta, I gotta fucking do my job, man. I gotta fucking get to, I gotta do what I want because this is what keeps me alive, man. This is what keeps me alive. Like stand up, it feeds my soul, but I, but I'm fucking missing I'm missing their lives. I just I'm seeing all of my friends' lives on Instagram. And that's <clears throat> and that's some real shit, dude. For real. You don't think about that stuff. You don't think about that when you're twenty three, when you're twenty four. If you, whoever's watching this, if you're a young person, and make sure you really want it, man, because you don't think about that important stuff later on in life that you will miss out on you'll miss out on all of it like just being around all those people i'm like you know i get to see it and i and i got to taste glimpse of it and it was it was magic man just being around all those different families like watching my buddy tim and and they're about to get married and start their journey of life and then being at my buddy mike's house and you know being <laughs> Seeing his his wife with the two kids crawling on her, like they're they're at that part of their life where where the kids are so demanding, when they're like like three and, and one, like it's nonstop. They need the energy from the parents. And then like my buddy Jay, he works so hard, comes home from work, he's on the phone, he's walking in on the door, he's on the phone, and there's just four kids running around the house, and it's just the energy is so electric, and it's just like. It's like that's that's the that's the love the the that that world is just like fun to see. I was wa I saw three different versions of of that of 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 a family from the beginning to the middle to like towards the later end and then and then you have my sister and and brother-in-law and 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 my my nephews are 10 and 7 so they're 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 about to like they're losing that that innocent child. Now they're they're about they're they're going to be teenagers soon so it's like I missed all of that. I missed it, and it's like. Then again, like if I if I lived a normal life, I would you would miss it anyway. So everybody's missing it, but I'm I I'm seeing it from a different perspective. I think because I do this, because I do stand up, and and I and I have time to just, like my like my buddy Jason comes home from work, and then it's nonstop. He's got to be a dad for these four kids, and it's it's like, it's it's unbelievable. It's it's uh. I, I was like, it's this is nonstop. You don't even have a second to to think that you could be tired. You can't even. You don't even know you're tired. Like even if you wanted to be tired, my buddy Jason, he can't be tired. He's there's no, he can't be tired. He would just be like, uh, he was like, I there's I can't, I, and you and you wouldn't think about it anyways because the energy of the four kids makes you not want to be tired because you want to be there for them, and um, you know, and then. I'm thinking about this is just right now thinking about like how I it, it made me sad thinking about I'm, I'm missing that like so are all those people who who I'm missing right now they're missing each other too because they don't have time they only have time for their families so in a way it's like a blessing that I got to see this I got to see it like my buddy Tim's in Miami and my buddies they don't get to go up to like up to uh you know Boca or Parkland to see my buddy Jay with the kids but I was able to like stop in and see all these different families and it's like so beautiful but it's like I don't know if I'll have that I don't know if I'll get to have that but I want that I don't know if this makes sense I don't know if it makes sense like I don't want you guys to think like I don't want you to think like I'm fucking sad and like I, I regret I don't I have no regrets at all I don't know. I just got emotional. This was real, and I and 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 it fucking just happened. Like, my whole thing is like again, like I I I could I could get married and have a family next year. I could do that, but then I don't think I, other things would be in line. Like I wanna, I want to, I want this to be successful. I want this to be successful. I I want my stand up to be successful. I you know I want covid to be over so that stand-up can be successful and then i want i, I uh, nothing going back to miami made me realize i want that more just as much as i want this but i want to be able to give them the life that i want to give them a good life i don't you know and and 
and I've I can only give them the life that I want them to have if it's through this. I guess that's what I'm saying. But it was like LA's for me, man. That's what it is. But I man, I miss them, man. I miss seeing everything. I mean, it's different, you know. I talk to my mom all the time and and seeing my my nephews and sisters, I I don't see them as much, but like you know, you you forget that like you you don't think about those things when I'm out. You, everybody gets you're in your own bubble. Like for years, I'm in my own bubble thinking like, I'm in LA, I'm doing my thing. This is great. This is what I want. Who cares? Oh, that would be a disaster. And then just just spending time with all of them and and and, and seeing the love that they have and, and, and watching them grow. And, 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 and uh, you know, my buddy Danny, he just had a baby literally today and he sent me a picture of it. And it's like, and, 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 and the, the, the fact that, they're scared the uncertainty of what's going to happen but like then seeing the joy of each of these people that i knew in college i knew these guys when i was 21 and we were drinking and we had no idea what the future was going to bring us you know we're just morons in college and now seeing like seeing what who they've become and what they have is it's 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 unbelievably beautiful it's an unbelievably beautiful thing that I think um, everybody should experience if it fits with what they want. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I'm not totally sure if I'm making sense, if I'm expressing what I really wanted to say. But, you know, I and I don't even know. Like, I didn't even plan on talking about this this episode. But for whatever reason, whatever I was talking about, something came out of me. And it made me really emotional. And it was... It was the, it, I think it was the fact that I was thinking about how like, you know, I, I'm missing out on, on, on that part of life, which I think is more important. I think that's what it was that really got to me is like, you know, I'm doing what I love, but like, I'm just surrounded by a bunch of other people who are like me and we're just like doing our art and we hope that someone connects to our art. We hope that somebody connects to our art and they appreciate it and we hope that we can make a very good living doing our art and and then that gives us the security to want to maybe share our wealth and art with with someone else and, and build a family or something like that but like you know i mean missing out on 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 my 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 nephews lives and and my friends kids lives like it's kind of sad it's kind of sad because i don't have a lot of friends in la with kids i did have a friend that was out here and, and, and they had a newborn and they, they too went back to Florida to be closer with their family. So, you know, I have one good friend out here that has a kid and I can't even spend time with him because of COVID because you got to be careful, especially with, you know, kids because at the end of the day, nobody knows. So there isn't that same community that I have, I have in Florida. That's the difference. That's really what it was. And, you know, in the last month, I spent a lot of time thinking about that and, 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 and being around those people and the, the amount of happiness it brought me was through the roof. It was through the roof. It was as much as what of, of happiness I, I get from, from the stand up. Like when it, like tonight I didn't go up tonight, but I was at a show and I was around comedians and and, and and we're in the green room and 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 seeing people out there in hearing the laughs and I'm in there with the comedians and there's different comedians that's that's my family that's what that is that's my family those are those are my family and and you watch your different friends have different success stories in their career and it's like you're watching your the, like we're watching each other grow up together but 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 the but just being around all of those those three people specifically because those are who I spent time with, you know, I envy what Tim has with his fiance Rebecca. Like that was, uh, you know, I am like what what I I envy what what they're at. Like what they they have no idea. They have no idea. I have a better idea in a way because I got to spend time with these other families, and that's so exciting. That's so exciting. To see that they have that coming. Like, and they're at the beginning. 
they get married next month and I get to go back in, in a month and tap in with everybody again. But and I just want to be able to do that more. I think I want to be able to like travel with them more. But, you know, be, like staying with my buddy Tim and Rebecca, like I, I envy like th that's so exciting that they're about to have what my buddy Mike and Vicky had and then what my buddy Jay and Ange have too. Like that's the purest form of life. Like, I get it. I've never thought about that before. Four months ago, I would have never had this conversation. But, like, the enjoyment of of raising, like, of having a family, I, 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 I just felt so connected that whole week with three different families at different points in their lives, if that makes sense. Um, but L.A. is where I will be. And, and and part of me has like even during COVID, I was like, what if I was able to make up? What if my podcast was big, big enough to where I was making good money and then I was able to still tour doing stand up? I could live in Florida and be around them. I thought about that for a little bit. I was like, OK, how do I get to that point? I would have to grind more here. But. I mean, people were moving. Rogan moved to Austin. I mean, that was a thing, but. This is this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I I have to be. Like I this is where I I feel I I when I was back in Florida though, I I didn't connect with anywhere I was. And I was all over Florida. I was in Palm Beach, I was in Parkland, I was in Fort Lauderdale, I was in Miami, and it wasn't the same. And I just didn't feel connected to the city. I didn't feel like I was supposed to be there. I didn't feel like it was for me. Um, I love it and it's where I grew up and, you know, I would love to be close to the Miami Dolphins, but I'm supposed to be here and this is where I have to be. And, and, uh, every day I will wake up and do my job because this is what I enjoy doing and this is what I want to be doing. But I, but I know that I have long-term goals that I really want. And, and I hope that whatever I've experienced in this last two months drives me to work harder or you know work smarter to get what I want because I, I know for sure I want that life too I also want that and is that greedy I don't know do I to to to, to wish to wish and hope that I could have both to have a, a very you know successful stand-up com comedy career with a, su a successful podcast and and I get to be a successful act actor and then also be blessed with a, a beautiful family is that greedy I don't know I don't know to have to want it all I don't know if it is but I want all of that I want it I want I want all of it and I and 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 it's not that I'm not happy it's not like that I don't want this to come off like I have no idea how the fuck this episode is going to come off. This is crazy. But I don't want this to come off like I'm not going to be happy unless I have that. I couldn't be happier than when I'm performing. So I need to do this. And this is going to have to be the thing that takes me to my other goal. If that makes sense. I hate talking like that. This is what has to take me to my other goal. Like you, I sound like a fucking a weirdo or something. Like like you know, like I sound. I don't want to sound like a, a professor or something, or like one of those like like motivational guys sometimes. But like, but you know what I mean. Like I, I like I could never like I, if I was living in Florida, I'd be so sad. Even if I if even if I was doing this podcast and I was doing stand up in Florida, like I was in Florida long enough to know that like I could do, I could do. I could do stand up. I could be a comedian in Florida and 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 make okay money, like not a lot, like a, a teacher's salary doing stand up in Florida, and I'd be driving all throughout Florida from Orlando to Miami, all the time. You know what I mean? You would have to be driving, and then. Would you really get really that good at comedy because you're not around the best? And there is something to comedy around being around the best comedians. Like you're around it. You're learning. They make you funnier. You're with each other. 
and the opportunities are endless. Like just being at a show, not even going up, you have no idea how many opportunities there are just from being around. It's very important. And I stress that to any other comedian. If you are listening to this and you started in a different city, you have to get to New York or L.A. You have to get to New York or L.A. If you do not, you will never be the best comedian version of yourself. It is impossible. It is impossible to be the best version of what you can be as a comedian if you are not living in New York or L.A. And that is a fact. And unfortunately, that is just the way it's going to be. And I promise you that is a fact. Um but going back like a you like, yeah i would just be there's not there's nobody for me to connect with in florida there is there's that emptiness that i there's time cuz i was there during the week and i was busy being around my friends kids but like at the end of the day they everybody's in their own bubble they have their own jobs they have their own drama they have their own work friends they have their coworker friends that they don't like they have their own um you know shit that they got to deal with and everybody's in their own bubble, and 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 that's the way that life is all over the country. You know, wherever wherever people choose to have their families and their careers, that's where, that's that's just the way it is. And I think that I am a fly on the wall. And when I was back there, I'm just kind of like observing it all, and I'm like, what? It it, it, it seems fun. It seems like that's a loving life, and and I don't want to miss out on it. And I want to be there for my friends and 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 be uh, around like their unconditional love that they have and and how supportive they are of me too everyone was so supportive they were all so generous um but i i didn't i i've never felt more connected with la than i ever have than than more recently like i used to always wonder like oh could i ever make it back to florida i don't to me it's could i ever make it to a point where i could move my family to Florida, like my, my, if I ever got that successful, but then you realize that I'm realizing this right now, like you can't take people out of what they're doing. They're connected with where they live too. So that wouldn't work out anyways. Like you, you know, when you're 20, when I was 20, we used to dream and be like, Oh, what if we were, we're so successful that we could move all of our friends to the same neighborhood and we all raised our families together. But that's, that's not realistic because everybody connects with different uh, things, everybody connects with things differently. Like, you know what I mean? Whether it's their, you know, maybe they love certain parts of the country because they just, it makes them feel good. You can't, everybody has their own feelings, but I, um, I, I, yeah, I'm going to be here and, uh, I'm going to be doing this and, you know, I, I, you know what it is. I, I want to make sure I make more of an effort to go back to Florida and be a part of, my my sister and brother-in-law's life more you know when i did go to florida this is what it was when i did go to florida it was for a show over the holidays so i was only ever spending time with my sister and my nephews and my brother-in-law and my mom and dad that was it because i was always like hey if i'm gonna go home then i i have to i have to spend it with my immediate family because i was only home for two or three times a year but then now I've been home a couple times and it made me realize that I was missing out on my other people's lives that were important to me and that made me who I am today in a way. So, you know, again, I, I hope this makes sense, um, what I'm saying or it resonates with you guys. I don't know as I chug my water. Um. Wow. I, I mean, I have a whole fucking page of notes. Sorry, I said the F word. A, a whole page of notes I was going to get into for this episode. And um, boy, did I not expect that to happen. And I don't know where, you know, I don't know what I'll get into next. But, um, you know, there's not really much left of the episode. I mean, I have I have all this stuff that I would I was going to go into. I mean. Man, I oh, this goes into it like um, I met a girl, not like this. I didn't meet like a girl like I love. I, I, I met this girl in Miami and, um, you know, we were hanging out and she was attractive and she seemed uh, 
there was something about her. She seemed like she had this good energy about her. She had a great smile. And she was very, uh, very attractive. Just her laugh, everything. And I, I was fooled by it. And we're hanging out. We're talking. And she's one of those people who is able to kind of just go travel. I don't know. There is a community of these people because I know certain people that do it. But, like, they'll buy a one-way ticket to Ecuador. You know what I mean? They'll buy a one-way ticket to Brazil. And they just – they're like, I'm going to go and I'm going to see what happens. And I'm going to go with the flow because I'm going to go with – I'm going to follow the energy and I'm be one within myself, and and, I, and I'm gonna be spiritual. And I'm gonna learn different cultures, and I'll and I'll go into I'll, I'll you know they'll they'll do drugs or whatever, and um, you know they'll try different things. Hold on, I got scared for a second. I don't know why. I just got paranoid that the camera shut off or something. Um, but like they'll be one with you know I don't know. They just there's people that do this, and. She's one of those people. She's traveled to like 30 plus countries and, you know, she's just pretty open minded person. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, you know, just a a very open mind. I mean, you have to be to do that. And she would be like, you know, she kept. So I'm learning this about her and so is everybody else. Not she wasn't someone that everybody knew. She was like an outside friend, kind of like how I was. But I think that's cool. I think it's cool that someone does that. I think that's cool that people do do that. There are people, and there was another girl. Her name was uh, Alyssa. I went to college with her. Um, My buddy Alex, my old roommate, he had done it for a little bit. But there's people who for like a living, not for a living, but like they work, but then they also like they'll have a job and they'll get a job and they'll work for like six months and then they travel for six months. And they – I think it grounds a human. I think it it, it humbles you. You see so many – different parts of the world that you realize that you know we're fortunate whatever it does to you i understand that it does that and i think it's cool that people do that but i also understand that that's not for everybody but this person was very passionate about her traveling and her experiences and as we continued to party throughout the night and this would be drinking or whatever um this was something that she would talk about non-stop you have to experience it you have to do this i wish everybody could have experienced what i experienced in ecuador or when i was in mexico i wish everybody could have experienced this it's really made me who i am today and what i believe in and i think that everybody should think this way or believe this way and i think it could like if we all thought this way we would all be a better person and 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 humble and and have more empathy for other people and more understanding. And it was just like uh, just more uh, uh, someone who was more into her emotions. But that's kind of like the way she would speak. And also she was six, seven years younger than me. So she's like 29 or 30, right? Maybe she's 30. So she's like pushing this. And we're getting drunk at one point And I say to her, and at this point we've been around for each other for four hours. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a no bullshit guy. So I say to her, I go, I, I like that you're passionate about what you're doing. And you're clearly an open book. Someone, so, by, by the way, people who do travel the world like this and, and they're open minded and they go to volcanoes and they take, uh, you know, they do mushrooms with tribes and shit like this. These people are an open book. Not like a comedian open book. Like a comedian... Uh, uh, the, the difference between these people and a comedian with like I'm an open book most comedians are open books like we just will say what's on our mind is we also have we're grounded to know we can read a room we're grounded that's that's the biggest thing about a comedian we could read a fucking room we like we could be like well let's stop talking about this because this isn't people aren't vibing with it whatever you know what i mean i don't have to go into details comedians just know how to read rooms that's what we do for a living uh these other people who travel the world, they they don't know that because they just think that they're blessed that they got to live that life and they think that other people should experience what they've experienced and 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 if they're not that that they're missing out on life and that's not true because whatever anyone is doing in life from a doctor 
to this girl, you're missing out on whatever they're doing. You have no idea what someone's personal experience is with whatever they're doing in life. And that's what's beautiful about life is everybody has a different point of view about everything because they've they've learned things differently. They experience things differently. And that's what is beautiful about life is about meeting someone in your life. And, 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 and if you're in your 20s, you don't even know this. But when you're in your 30s, close to your 40s, you, you meet people and they're like, Hey, what's up? I, I just met you for the first time. We're 36. You're 36. Yeah. So, and then you get to know someone. You're like, whoa, you've experienced that. Cool. I've experienced this. And, and you're exchanging information and learning from each other. And that's the beauty of life is that everybody has a different experience and you're sharing it. And, and, and you, you accept that you are happy that you experienced your journey. Hopefully you're happy with what you have experienced. That's how I think people should look at things. This one girl in particular was like pressing that a lot. I don't know what her experience is with other people, but for me that night, this is all that was coming up was you got to do this. You got to do this. And I was like, yo, yo, yo. The point of this whole story is I said to her, I go, you got to stop pushing your passion on other people. That's what it came on to came down to. Don't push your passion onto someone else because whatever your passion is, that's what makes you, you. And not everybody has to be in line with the way you think. Not everybody has to agree with what you think and what you want to do or what. That's what's awesome about life is that we're all different and we all believe different things. And we have different opinions about things like that's the best part. Arguing is fun sometimes. I like to argue because I like to understand why do you think that way? As long as it's not like out of control, it's like, why do you believe that way? Because I strongly disagree with you. You know what I mean? Like that's normal. So I was like, stop pushing your passion on people. I go, that would be like if I walked up to everybody I've ever met and was like, you got to do stand up. It's unbelievable. When I'm on stage and I tell a story about my dog dying and I make people laugh, pure ecstasy. That's a true story. I, I have a new bit about my dog passing, and there's nothing that's ever made me feel crazier and more connected that I'm getting people to to laugh at that with me because there was something that was funny about it to me. Hopefully, you get to experience that one day. But that being said, aside, imagine if I was walking around being like, you got to try stand-up. You got to try stand-up. It's unbelievable. Stand-up is unbelievable. Like you would be like, this is, this guy's out of his mind. That's what I said to her. And she was like, it was like I blew her mind up. She was like, oh yeah. She's very open-minded where she would take constructive criticism. I, I hope, you know, I don't know, but it was, uh, it was, um, you know, it was just an interesting person to meet though. I would, I would say that I would say it was interesting to meet her because she was very, passionate in her ways but here was something that w that oddly threw me off a little bit because she was like you know traveled the world 30 plus countries open-minded experienced different things met tons of new people probably right but then I could sit there and explain to her about pushing a passion on someone or other things and she was easily Min, like changed manipulated I, I don't want to say manipulated because that manipulated comes off as a like a bad word i could easily make her go oh you're right you're right right i don't know what the word is for that person but i feel like i was teaching her but we're only six years different like i just feel like if someone has traveled that much she should be teaching me not that anybody should be teaching anyone but like I'm trying to find the words here. I just feel like she, I could change her mind easily. And I think it's, I don't think that's a bad thing to have. If anyone out there is easily, like I do know some people that are easily manipulated and I want to use that word there. And it's not good that are older than me. Like I know a 38 year old who's easily manipulated. Like if you present a strong enough argument for any subject, he will leave his opinion and go to your opinion. I don't think that's a good personality trait to have 
in your 30s. I think in your, at least your mid-30s, at least for a 38-year-old. Now, if a 22-year-old has it, it's fine, right? Just a 22 or 23-year-old. And if a 30-year-old has it, it's a little it's a little more – it's a little – you're like, hmm, that's interesting. That's an interesting thing. That's what I'm trying to say. It's interesting that I could change your opinion and you're 30 and you've visited a lot of countries. And it wasn't just about – I know I was saying let's – the lesson for this episode is to not push your passion on people, is to share your passion. That That's really what the whole episode from the beginning to the end is. We're not pushing our passion on people. I'm sharing my passion with you. I'm sharing what my passion is. And I think me identifying one of my other passions would be to have a family is kind of what made me emotional in this episode. But I, sharing a passion is something that's beautiful. We don't want to push our passion on people. And I think that's the lesson to be learned for this episode. So that being said, that aside, being able to change a person's opinion easily is a red flag, I think, the older they are. Agree or disagree? You know what I mean? I, I, if, 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 you know what I mean? If I'm going to fuck, if, if someone's presenting something to me and, and, and they're going hard in the paint again, see how I always bring it back around? That's what I do. That's what we do on the takeover because we're a sports podcast that doesn't talk about sports. I bring it back to the beginning, a good callback. My whole thing is if you go hard in the paint about something, you have a strong opinion about it, and then I present to you a different point of view on it, and instead of you just understanding it, you jump on my point of view and agree with it, that's a red flag. I think that's a red flag. I think that's what I'm trying to say. And then that was interesting about meeting this person. I don't really have much to really more to say about that person. I mean, my notes were just like uh, the whole thing was pushing a passion on someone, really. Um, you know. Um, for as far as uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, as far as my notes, I mean, I feel like I should I should save most of these other notes for next week. I mean, you know, or yeah. Um. Wow, talk about therapy, man. This was that. This was that therapy. This this was it. This was this was groundbreaking for us. I think this is good. Now. If only a hundred people listen to this episode, will I kill myself? Probably. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Huh. I feel like this episode, I feel really good right now. I feel really good. I'll tell you what. I feel awesome. I feel like this is an episode where my mom's going to call me after she hears this. And she's going to be like, maybe you should come home. <laughs> she's so annoying. Uh Man, uh, what is life? What is life? It's uncertain. That's for sure. We do know that. There, life is uncertainty. So, what I what I can say, from what I've learned, is you you just you really do have to live in the moment and enjoy what is presented in front of you, and appreciate the relationships you have with people. And I think. Um, I think that's what matters a lot. I think that's for sure. I think that's important. And uh, always stand by your friends and your family. Because that's all you have at the end of the day. That's really all you have. Nothing else matters. And um, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's it for this week. I think I feel good. I feel good. And um, I'm not going to watch this episode because I don't. I feel like if I watch this episode... Then, I mean, I feel like I shouldn't edit it. I should just put it on. Because if I do, then I'm, I might get self-conscious about some of it and edit it out. And I don't want to do that. Because I, I feel like this is one of the more realer episodes I've had. This is a pretty real episode. And um, I'm excited to share it. So, um, you know, again, thank you guys for listening. Please leave a five-star review if you're listening on Apple Music or Apple Podcasts or whatever the f- fuck it's called. Uh, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, uh, like the video, share it, sure. Tell a friend, you know, share the podcast, man. I, You know, whatever. If this can help someone, that's all that really matters. Um, and, uh, you know, thank you guys for tuning in each week. And, uh, you know, without you, you know, 
then I guess I would still be doing this for myself. I would always have my mom. At the very least, she would still be listening. So I at least I have her. Um, yeah, this was good. So I will I'll, I'll hear from you guys. I, I mean, I will, you'll hear from me next week, and um, you know we'll get to we'll get back to having a good time and having fun. But sometimes we need these, and and this is episode forty. This was it. I'll see you guys next week. The takeover. Okay. Did we start? Yeah, we did. That's how I start. Takeover. Now there's a lot of things we're gonna get in it. When we speak, and when I speak, and when I speak, when I speak yes. Thank you.